Hey everybody, Stu Smith and Jeff Nichols here with you again, and we are going to talk about something that we, we kind of discussed a little bit about it uh, several months ago when we talked about the officer and enlisted options, you know, before going to SEAL training. Uh, but this one is going to be a little bit more about the mechanics, so to speak, of how to get to BUDS. What roads, if you want to become a SEAL, all roads lead to BUDS, right? But there are many, many roads and many different avenues that you can take uh, depending on what you want to do, you know, in the SEAL team. So, you know, I, I can speak specifically on the officer route. Jeff can speak specifically on the uh, enlisted route. And we're just going to try to put them two together and, you know, let you guys make your decision, you know. Yeah, um, there's, we're just going to have a conversation because, like the, first of all, there's no wrong answer. Yeah. Number two – it's one of those things that um, there are many, as Stu has said, there's many, many roads to getting there. We're really just going to cover the primary three and like mention some of the others because like lateral transfers and prior service can get incredibly complicated. And the, the, the reality is, is that it's probably likely that Stu and I don't know enough about it to have anything other than a, an opinion. And it's, so that just really, yeah, and a lot of those it. things also are case by case basis. For you know, sure. You quit buds and you trying to get back and you're trying to lateral transfer from another job in the military or from the fleet, from another yeah. service, you know, that's, yeah. that's another can of worms that it, are pretty, pretty tough to do. In fact, if you go to the sealswick.com website, they basically have, you know, all these blocks of how to get to buds. You know, if you want to enlist, you want to enlist from the fleet. If you want to enlist from the street, you want to enlist from the fleet. You want to go for OCS, you want to go to ROTC, you're at the Naval Academy or other service academies. Other service academies are now going to SOAS and they're transitioning from a, and it's not, it's difficult, but it's not that difficult to do from other service academies. So where do you want to start, Jeff? You want to start on the, yeah, I just, I just think the that officer just, routes. Yeah. We just kind of talk through it and just say, again, we're not going to get too much into the minutia at also, but this is like, all right, I want to be a seal. Like this is kind of like the first video. Like I want to be a seal. Okay. Well, your first decision is, is how do you think outside the physical? Like, right. Let's talk about, this is going to be like, Hey, if you're going to go to Academy, make the young decision young, for example, you have to have a real focus on mathematics and your studies and leadership and all the stuff that Sue's going to talk about. So that way you can kind of go, all right, based off of how I feel and what I want to do in the community, like, okay, that's the route. So like that way you can begin to plan this and you're 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, whatever it may be. And that's the idea for this. So yeah, let's, let's just say, I think because the reality is, if you go, if we're talking OCS and ROTC, we're talking the academy, we're talking enlisted. We're saying these people aren't waverable people. They're, they're all just your standard, like no, no real issues of entry of service, no waivers because of eyesight. We're just saying yeah. average person. The person that's going to have to make his, his or her decision earliest is the ones going to the Naval Academy. And Stu can kind of jump obviously right into that. Yeah. Like, so why, you know, why is that that why is yeah. it that you need to be really no like your sophomore year, junior year, high school? You're like, I'm certain I want to go to the academy. Well, yeah, yeah. If you're trying to get into the naval academy or you know college for that matter, it it, it starts early. Yep. You know, you, you're you know good colleges and good ROTC programs. If you're thinking about the officer route, you know those things. You really kind of have to have everything kind of set up by junior year. Yep. And and then get good scores on your PSA or your SAT or ACT, you know, take all the, you know, good scores on that to be competitive in the, in that world, you know, have some athletic experience, you know, leadership experience. So yeah, that's really what they're looking for. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of people. They're getting a lot of people that, that have good grades. They're looking for people of higher character. Like truthfully, I think, that's one of the one of the cool things I, I heard about the academies, and this is this is credit to all of them. Is someone once said when they were like about the Marine Corps, and I thought this about the academies, and I go, it's really one of the last bastions of of, of real traditional military leadership style and grooming over a real long period of time. Four years of military, five years in some cases, and if it's been that first year at yeah, you know, prep, prep school, school sometimes. Yeah. But that five years, we'll call it, of, of, of average of 
of that military indoctrination at those, you know, at those universities institutions is just amazing. So that's why they're saying we got to start it young. Because yes. it's a long process. It, it is a long process. And you know what? It, there's an attrition rate there too. You know, I mean, I think we started with like 1350 and graduated 950. So we lost, yeah. what's that? 400 people. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a big chunk. Um, that's, you know, anyway, it's that, that is a way to go. So let, let, let's think about the, the journey, right? If you're, um, a midshipman, whether it's ROTC or, or service Academy, because now you can, you can literally do this from West Point or Air Force Academy. I think this year, Air Force Academy and, and army took, um, six guys, maybe four, four to six guys that are going to buds. So that they are actually getting out of the army and joining the Navy. When they graduate, they're going to wear a Navy uniform and then go to buds. You know, because because they went through a program called SEAL Officer Assessment and Selection, short they call it SOAS, and that's like a two to three week program where you're going to go to buds, you're going to be in a large group of OCS candidates um, that haven't gone to OCS yet, so they are they are basically been screened through the process, um, you know, to get selected to go to SOAS. Right, and they prove themselves at so as to whether or not they get the slot to go. Same for ROTC and same for Naval Academy. And there's really no set number now where there used to be in my day, you get 20 from the Academy, 20 from ROTC, 10 for OCS. And it didn't matter. I mean, if you had 25 really solid guys at the Academy or 25 really solid guys at ROTC, five of them didn't get it because those other billets went to the other sources so now they can be a little more flexible and actually go with the best guy be more competitive yeah, yeah they're be, forcing everyone to be more competitive yeah some years the naval academy has 30 plus candidates this year they had a little less because you know west point took four of them and um you know so it's you know and they had had some really good ocs guys i mean the type of guys that are getting ocs slots are you know D1 athletes, um, you know, higher education. Uh, we had this one guy that I, I saw that was 28 years old, um, prior military engineer, you know, when he got out of the military. Now he's trying to go back as an officer. Um, so, you know, they have some unique skills and, and some history behind them. So it, it is very competitive. PST scores, I don't even want to get into the PST scores because they're right. they're off the chart. I mean, they're – 100 plus, 100 plus, 20 plus, you know, sub nine minute run, sub, you know, eight minute swim, roughly, you know, eight minute or less. Yeah. Um, and they're just, they're studs. I mean, they're, they're stud athletes. Um, you know, we've got a couple of national champion lacrosse players, D1 swimmers. Yep. Um, yeah, I think the full yeah. gamut of everything. Yeah. And that's where it's, then that's kind of the point of think early, not to disqualify, but think early to begin to prepare. Yes. And yeah, it's the, a journey. The, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a long journey to go, go the officer route. And uh, one, you got to finish college. Um, and the kicker is, you know, if you're going to go to the officer route, you have to go through SOAS. Now the Naval Academy is a little different because they have so many people that want to go to buds. It's like over a hundred per class and they can only send about 50 or 60 people to SOAS. And then out of that group, about 25 to 35 will get selected to go to bud. So it's, it's a constant, every year it is a constant decrease of numbers. So you may start with a hundred, 150 people that want to go to buds and they do like this three day little hell week where they'll ship in buds instructors and they'll just get beat down at the Academy for a weekend. They call it the bud screener. Um, and then, you know, that's junior year. Then if you do well in that, you get to go to SOAS and prove yourself again to the BUDS instructors. And then after that, you find out a few months later if you get it. And, uh, you know, I, and to be honest with you, that's one reason why I think people get a little pissed off when Academy guys don't make it. Because yeah, because they've had so many screeners. They've had there. so yeah. many screeners. And, you know, they're, they get one chance at the PST. They've been busting their ass for two years to get their PST scores great. And then they go take the PST and it's got a rock. I mean, that's, that's the different yeah. world between the officer uh, enlisted route 
Um, and they, you know, to be honest with you, they can be that selective because the demand is there. You, you, yeah. You don't need, you don't need as many officers as you do the enlisted. I mean, it's, it's a one tenth ratio of officers yeah. to enlisted in the team. So, I mean, it's, it, it's a tough route to go. There's right. a lot of attrition along the, the process, but once you get two buds, typically, you know, the officer's, typically do pretty well it, it, yeah by percentage higher. their completion is way higher yeah it's, one it's they're a little more mature they've had some screening processes prior so they kind of had a taste of what buds is like so they tend to have a, a higher graduation rate well but again you look at look at the process like to get a guy that goes i'm gonna go to the academy and my intent is to graduate buds is not as an officer that's a six year, that's like a six yeah. year evolution six year journey. That's six years of, of struggle. We talk about mental toughness. Like that's, it's not a big surprise. I, I'd be venture to guess that probably what Naval Academy graduate graduate have graduated probably 80% of anyone they've ever sent there. Probably. Like I said, uh, we get pissed when we lose one. One. I mean, yeah. I mean, my, my year, we went 20 for 20 and yeah. uh, you know, we expect that, you know, yes. and it doesn't always happen, but people get hurt people quit i mean it just happens yeah. but so but again that's the idea is and it's not because they're well they not that there weren't exceptional people it's just that they were forged over a six year period whereas the you know they're competing with the 18 year old high school student that had didn't have any of that maturation at the academy no so you got a 98 percent attrition rate for 18 year olds and you got like a 15 percent maybe yeah at the academy, but it's they're the same humans. We've yeah. just been forged completely different. That's a good point. Think, I never think did. about that. Like yeah. for those, you're like, well, I no, I don't want to go to academy, but I want to. I want to go in. That's why Stu and I are saying, may we may not be saying 23, 24, 25, but again, that maturation between 18 and 20 is very different. It is big. Those yeah, two my, years make a big difference. And that's a, so like that same sort of, I guess that's the transition from my standpoint of, okay, now whether you're dealing with ROTC, you're a college student, right? Or you've gone through OCS, you're going to OCS, you've gone through college. So now you have that four year, five year, potentially maturation process again. So even we could even say that by adding OCS and making it as competitive as it is, has made it better for the academy because it's made it more challenging. And then you have ROTC where I think ROTC is, is like probably the best kept secret. It's just that there aren't many ROTC guys that get through by per or that get selected. I think by percentage, because you know, when you're in, when you're in ROTC, the, you're being watched, right? Yeah. There's, yeah. You're, and then obviously the academy, but your OCS, you're like, you could have been the college student that was a former athlete for a year or two. And spent the last couple of years in a fraternity. No offense to those folks, but it yeah. just it becomes it a yeah. less than active lifestyle. We'll call it that. So, but if you're if you are laser focused and you are hard set on being an officer, but you're like I'm not. I kind of want to experience college a little bit. My ROTC, suggestion is yeah. ROTC. Yeah, ROTC is a good route. It's a, and, it, and then it just becomes because see the thing is is like Navy ROTC are on pretty prominent large university, Auburn, like in Alabama, Auburn have them, but Troy did in places. Right. So it was like Navy ROTC is, is a pretty good gig, I think. Oh, yeah, you get all the facilities. Now, the only problem is a lot of them don't have exposure to, you know, active duty SEALs. Right, right, for you know, sure. Whereas at the academy, there's, there's five SEALs that are stationed there. Yeah, you know, at, at any one time that are a part of the And, and passing process. through there constantly, you yeah. and – yeah, and, and then, like I said, when the, the so as you always always people passing through. Yes, yeah, you, 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 I mean, you get you get access to actual buds instructors that are gonna put you under log PT. I mean, that's yeah. that, it's that's a good sneak priceless. You can't because you can't pretend like the buds instructors that come over aren't pretending being buds instructors. They are. Yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. pressure is serious. It's palatable. Yeah. Right. Whereas, like. Even even when your 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 mentor or Stu and I were former guys, like we're not applying the pressure that's palatable. If I was like, oh yeah, I am a first phase instructor by the way, and I'm I just took the position there as the LPO. I'm going right. to be there for the next eighteen months. And oh by the way, that's when I'm going to see you there. Yeah, they, that's real. 
they That's have real. it figured out. You know, I, yeah. I just go by memory of what I endured and, uh, you know, and, you know, be honest with you. I'm, it's exhausting being an instructor that's yeah. that's mean to be turned it, on it's a, it's a lot of acting um and i i, I prefer to be the coach you know so sure. i'm, I'm I, I see somebody doing log pt wrong i'm gonna correct them versus yell at them and tell them they're stupid and weak yeah you know, but th be prepared for that but know? that's gonna happen so yeah. and that's why i think like i guess the transition for me like an enlisted side is that it was easy it was extremely easy so let's let's talk about the routes for the enlisted you know, you got the street and you have the fleet. Yeah. I, I mean, I can, I'll, I'll speak to the street yeah. right away because the fleet is – that's where it gets a bit – there's so many different answers that we, you and I have come across. But so yeah. for me, from the street, it, I guess I can say the easiest thing to do is not have a criminal record, right? not have possession charges, not um, – again, your ass app has to be – I think it's – a. 75 or better 72 or something like that yeah then, you know what you can go to sealswick.com and yeah, find out I, so I, I don't remember those numbers that's the rundown and i guess my advice is stay out of trouble get good grades um if you're unsure that's the beauty of off the street if you're unsure train like take you obviously still have that time because it's saying like at 18 essentially you can come off the street and go do it but you have like kind of Stu and I mentioned it before many, many times, I think the optimal window, if I was going to pick an age, I'd say 20 to 22. That's where in that somewhere in there, beginning of it at the end of it, you know, it might, it might be, you know, 23 for some, right. I'm not saying we're discounting the 18 year olds, but just by the state of maturity, giving yourself a couple years after high school and just getting off the street is, it was, some, is some people fast. are late bloomers too. Yeah, you that was me. People are late bloomers. You yeah. imagine you at 18 versus you post college. For sure. You, you know, I mean, I was, even that's the difference one year for me. My freshman year of college versus my high, my senior of high school was 65 pounds and in six inches, seven and a half inches. Yeah, yeah. So one year. A lot of late bloomers there. If you're, if so you're going through that kind of growth while you're getting beat down every day. Yeah, and then, and then try to heal. Lot, so, that, like, for me, I was for, – for me – Trying to, I want to put in this timeline, this will make me a little bit more sense in my, at least in my head. It's like, you have that 18 year old kid that are 17 year old to late bloomer. The body is expending all that energy to mature bones, tissue, Bro, brain. Yeah. And now you're putting yourself into this training load, which we want you to do because it's a good time to train, but it's not a good time to overtrain. So it's point. not a good time at all. It's, it's probably the second worst time to put the body under that much physical stress. The Absolutely. other one would be like a child from like six to nine. Yeah. Like you know, really stress a child out, not even just physical, but you'd see what I mean. Yeah. Cause that's the maturation, the, the first stage. But anyway, that's what I kind of like want people to start thinking about and goes, okay, if I'm doing good all around athletic stuff, I'm running, I'm swimming, I'm doing resistance. I'm doing a fair amount of, of that, of the body weight work in that 18, 19 year old age group, do it all. Just be an athlete, run, jog, swim, all that stuff. As you are going through puberty and maturing, as that puberty begins to slow down, you know, in those 20 year old time frame, then you can get a little bit more specific and start really focusing on that PST, those real finite numbers. And that's, that's where coming off the street allows you to really time your body with your entry of service. Because once you commit to OCS or OTC or the academy, you're just really hoping that your body cooperates. Yeah. Now, I think that's the big advantage for the enlisted man that's just like, you know, we really want to be physically ready. We really want to be – the reality is no matter what route you take, you're going to be early. You're going to be ready. You just might be a bit early, physically a bit earlier if you enlist. Just because you don't have to wait till you're 22. Yeah. Yeah, but they're yeah. all great options. They're, so oh, absolutely, they're, they're all great options. Uh, the enlisted route, you know, you really need to go to sealswick.com and click those links up there, and it walks yeah. you through. Yep. If you're, you know, a civilian, and uh, when when we you say on the street, in, yeah. when we are on the street, that's what we mean. You you know, you're not part of the military yet. 
you know, it has a route specifically for you and how that works. And we, we've discussed it over the, the, the year of doing these podcasts and different, different ones and, you know, the different issues that you're going to have with recruiters and mentors and all that. There is a journey. There is a paved path for you to do that. And it is paved by hundreds of people every year doing that route. It is the easy button to get to buds, right? It is, that is, if there is such thing as an easy button, that is how you do it. Now, the harder way to do it is if you enlist or you go to buds and you don't make it and then you're in the fleet, either way, you're in the fleet, you know, it's hard to make that transition from the fleet back to buds. It happens. It happens all the time. I mean, there is a way. And if you go to the SEAL SWIC website, you will see how do you do this? A lot of it is chain of command centered. And it is also year group and what your job is. Because sometimes you pick a job that they're not going to let you change to become an SO or your year group's full in, in the SO world, you might not be able to get back. Yeah. So you actually have to do your time of service, get out, then come then back hope. in. Yeah, then hope. Yeah, they, that's the yeah. other side too is the same for those lateral transfers and other branches of service. Uh, it's the, one of the house guests, the clients that just came last week with me, he was – in the Coast Guard, he is in the Coast Guard for the next four months. Well, his command really supports it, so it's going well. And to do so, a lateral, do an inner service yeah. transfer. He, he, so he's, he, as yep. soon as he's out, he'll spend two weeks at Great Lakes. Oh, that's cool. Uniforms, that sort of stuff, do a little bit of PT, and boom, he'll be at Buds. There is a process for that. But and, that, is, and I'm saying, like, I'm only uncommon. This really for one thing. It's super uncommon because it's happening smoothly number one, and it's happening because it's happening at all. It's because of his Coast Guard leadership is all about it. Like yeah. his, your leader's like, yeah, man, that'd be awesome. Be very cool. Now he's been in the Coast Guard for six years already. And he's a solid dude. Like he's, he is, he's at the, he's, he's, he were, he's already part of the, the VBSS crew, yeah. like kind of their high speed. Go- yeah, he's already legit. part of that. So that's he's legit. just like, his leadership's like, yeah, man, you, you're one of the team leaders, like, go for it, go, yeah. So it's because his leadership, if his leadership is like, I don't know, man, he would have to get out probably. And again, this is my opinion. He'd probably yeah. have to just get out, let some time, like pump his brakes, go see a Navy recruiter and go, all right, I know I've already just got out, but they were paying in my butt. Like, what can we do without committing? Right. Yeah. Because then the recruiter, it's, it, it's possible that you getting out at five, six years, go to your recruiter, you might have been shit hot, like admin, like super tight. You may mo- know more about the admin coming from the Coast Guard about the Navy than this person. Just, not to knock recruiters, yeah. but I'm just saying, like, my summary is this. Outside of the three that Stu and I have talked about, you see, we could go down this rabbit hole that would just be endless. Whether yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, the lateral transfer, it's branch transfer, it's dealing with recruiters. Just we're lay the three out. If you start there and go, oh, these, because it, it's likely that if you go OCS Academy enlisted or ROTC, the only differentiating fact between qualifying for those is really kind of like grades and leadership. But health wise. Physically, you should if you qualify for one, you'll qualify for all. Yeah, the rest absolutely. of them are kind of like waivers. Yeah, so there's so many options as we yes. as you have cut and encountered. Yeah, that, that's a good point because you know there are I guess there's four ways that are paved to get to buds, and that is the enlisted from the street route, it is the OCS route, it is the ROTC route, and it is the Naval Academy route. Yeah. Those no, those so are yeah, paved. No, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are paved pretty easily. Now there are other outliers. Let's call them that you can come from a other service academy and get in, right? You can come from uh, the fleet and get in. You can come from former military. Let's say you were a marine for four years. You got out, finished college, and now you want to become. You want to go to OCS and become an officer. Yeah, that's an option. I mean, or you can there's a, then there's the list. There's a. I have heard, and I, I've heard, but I've seen the contrary as well, is you go in as Navy Reserves, and the process to BUDS is really fast, I've seen. But yeah. again, it depends on a person situation. That fast route was like a guy spent three years in reserves. Like, 
did all of his duty, no issues, leadership loved him, wanted to take the next step, put in his paperwork, and like, absolutely, we'll support you. We hope, wish you the best. They did, and it was streamlined. And then there's other guys that have been like, well, I've heard this easy route, went into the reserves, wasn't a great sailor on the reserve side, leadership didn't support it, probably because he was a bit of a jerk. Yeah. So – not that that's always the case, but I understand there's so many different options. So ask the questions. It's worth yeah. it. It's worth the it. The reserve route is, is a unique one too, because they usually have to sign on for active duty, whether they make it or not. Yeah. And that used uh, to not be the case. Yeah. It used to not be the case. It used to be, if you didn't make it, you could go back home, which. Yeah. Or you could get out. Yeah. That was like the easy button, which was yeah. too easy to quit. You know, it's, there, there, there's, there, there's some. There's some skin in the game in any of these, right? Yes. If you don't yes. make it through the officer route, you know, like very likely you're probably going to go to the surface fleet and drive ships. Every now and then you get some guys that can be pilots if, if they're, if they need pilots, yep. um, you know, for the enlisted route, it, it really kind of depends on the needs of the Navy. You know, what are, what are the rates that, you know, may, maybe you can do the rate that you had picked, you know, prior to becoming an SO um, hopefully you, you can, if you, that is something you're interested in, right. but then, you know, when you do that, you want to pick a rate that is not undermanned. That is not, uh, if anything, you want a rate that's overmanned because then, then they'll get yeah. rid of you. They'll, hap so, they'll happily shift you. Yes. Yeah. And, but problem is if there's a whole bunch of people making it through buds in your year group and they don't need anybody for that year group three years later or two years later, that makes it real you difficult can't predict to come back in too. So there's some skin in this game for right. not quitting, right? It, it, you really want to make it through this because, you know, your secondary options aren't necessarily what you join the military to do anyway. But right. I will say this. There are guys that find a home in another world of the military because, you know, like I said, it, I think in, in our failure video that we did, you remember we talked about, what happens when you quit buds? I mean, I have a friend of mine that's an admiral now, you know, in the, in the surface Navy, you know, didn't make it through buds, you know, failed drown proofing and got kicked out. You know, he found a home, you know, there's other guys that are yeah. in the Intel world that went in the, you know, Intel world. And then, then, then they're in the CIA, you know, yeah. I mean, there's ton of different options for you to go, but sometimes that option to get back to buds may be challenging. So do your research and find out the, the right one you want to do. Yeah, and like finally for me, the last thing is this, is people, people make this mistake far too often. They go, well, I want to go to Bud's. If I don't do that, well, screw it, man. I'll just, I'll just go do ED. And if I don't make that, I'll just go do switch. It's not that simple. You don't just yeah. get out of one special program. The Navy goes, well, how else can we help you before we make you actually earn your service? Right, you don't just go. Oh yeah, just go down the street and check in the EOD. Like they're the super high speed building that's super well funded and has highly intelligent guys that have busted their ass to get there. But we'll let you right in the door. Right. If I don't make EOD, like you just go down the street. Those guys, those special boat guys that busted their ass, went through their own. You just go in there and you'll they'll let you in. No, it's like you go to Buds, you quit. Go to EOD, you quit. You go to Swick, you quit. And they're like, that's cool, man. You see those huge gray ships out there? There's people that love being on it. Let's see if you're one of them. Yeah. You know, it's, it's gonna be. You, you, you will be, you have to earn your slot. If you get the opportunity to maybe go SWIC, it's because you went through buds and something happened that was out of your control. Maybe you got injured. Maybe um, it was an injury that you're not allowed to get back. You know, something happened. Maybe it was just, you sucked at one particular thing that, but you're great at everything else. Yeah. You know, something has to get your foot into the door to those other special programs. It's not just, Hey, um, yeah. Cause kind of once you, know, you once you that. are in that spec, that NSW sphere, I will call it yeah. even as like, you're a CB or like, I know a couple guys that supported us CB specifically that were just amazing. Oh and yeah. A couple of them went to buds and made it through. Yeah. Those guys are they kind of get attached to us. We like, These guys are seriously awesome guys to be around and they, you know, they go, hey, man, I'm thinking about going to Buds, and you just go to your chain of command and go, hey, Master Chief, so-and-so, can you write him a letter of recommendation? Like, especially after deployment, like, heck, yeah, man. Master Chiefs, commanders, lieutenant commanders, just sign off and go, heck, yeah, man, I signed that off. 
and he's in buds four months after that deployment and just nice. it. he's just yeah, like okay well those underwater can... side a little bit he's like oh it's totally worth me enduring all the crap that i've heard to be here and see him be part of this yeah so that cool. that internal success rate is pretty high too i think yeah that's a good point when yeah. they recruit from in yeah so. i mean I, those, those underwater construction guys or cbs are, are hard dudes yeah in fact, my, my LPO was a underwater construction guy in my buds class. Yeah. Good, good guy too. So, so hopefully that was helpful. And it's just, cause again, it's like, what's the first question after you say, I want to be a seal and go, which way do you want to go? Yeah. You know, first of all, I, I will say this, uh, we'll end it with this. Go to sealswick.com because they have all the routes to get to buds there and explained. I mean, long before you ask questions like, what's the eyesight I need to have? What's the ASVAB yeah. score go I need to, to have? Website, yes. you know, go to that website and read and learn, right? Yeah. First, right? Yeah. I, I've also written a couple of articles too. One that's called How to Get to Buds. I'll, I'll put the, the links for all oh of these God. down below. Also written an article about, you know, you're at the service academy. You know, how do you go from freshman to SEAL, right? Yeah. And it's, it gives you the journey of the uh, the academy, you know, especially the Naval Academy journey of how to get there. Um, but yeah, I mean, th there there are ways to get there. There's paths to get there, but just you, you have to be patient and go through the process and just get ready every day. You need to be getting better than you were yesterday. Yep, for sure, yep. for sure, for sure. All right, so Still, there I we go. It. There's another day. How do you get to buds? All roads lead to buds if you want to be a seal. Yep. <laughs> we'll see you, Jeff. Appreciate it, too. Yep. And still recording.